Now that we understand the properties of the binomial probability distribution and we know how to recognize it when we see it, namely the fixed trials, the um, similar consistent probability of success, etc., we want to be able to find those probabilities. Now to do that we're going to use our calculator and we're going to use it two different ways. So there's two calculator functions we can use. There is the binome PDF, as in probability distribution function, and the binome CDF. C stands for the word cumulative. C-U-M-U-L-A-T-I-V-E, uh, -E, cumulative. So you're gathering, you're accumulating. Now, I say that and it kind of blows over your head a little bit. So we're actually just going to do an example together and hopefully that will help you understand the differences between those two. So we're going to have a random family that has four children. We're going to find both the probability distribution and the cumulative, there it is, probability distribution, for the random variable x equals the number of boys for the family if we assume there are only two equally likely biological sexes. Um, again, that's a pretty common value that we've we've run, run into before. We assume kind of 50-50, we assume there's only two biological sexes. Both of those things are not actually the case, but we're just going to assume it for our purposes. Okay, so let's look at x equals the number of boys. So I have here, if you're going to have uh, four children, then the number of boys would be 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So you can have as low as 0 boys, which mean all girls, one boy, two boys, and so on. Now, if this is sounding familiar, that's because we've actually already seen these probabilities in Section 6.1. I promised you in Section 6.1 at the time that I would teach you where it all comes from, and now is that time. Um, I know you were waiting with bated breath, but here you go. Okay, so how do I find these? Well, to find the probabilities, I want the probability that x is 0, x is 1, and so on. So the probability is the p of x equal to x which is equal to binome PDF. So I'm going to type this over, so give me one second. There, I made the table just a little bit wider. I'm going to do that for future notes. Okay, so I need binome PDF. That's the probability that x is 0, x is 1, right, and so on. Now the PDF needs the n and the p function. So I would need to make a note up here somewhere of what n is. Well, of course, n is right here. It's four children. So n would be four. Just make a note of that. So n is equal to four. And then also we would need to know what our probability of success is, which was assumed equally likely biological sexes is right there. So that's telling us that we assume that 0.5 is our probability of success. Those words equally likely mean that we assume 0.5. And this word, right, or it's being four children up at the top, lets you know that it's n. So according to this table, what I can do is I can actually type 4, 0 0.5. Now the way that TI denotes this, the TI company, Texas Instrument Company, denotes is that x is actually optional. You can put it in, but you don't have to. So let me show you that on the calculator real quick. Okay, so where is all this binome stuff anyway? Binome is a, in the distributions menu, so it's above your VARES button. So you hit second, VARES, and then hit, and, um, it's down towards the bottom. In my calculator, it's letter A for binome PDF. It might be in a different place in your calculator. So kind of scroll through until you find it. So I have binome PDF. Now my trials is N, right? So I have four trials, so that would be four. My probability of success is 0 0.5. Now if all I want is the top row, say, then I can just type in the value 0 and press enter. And then I'm going to press paste. Now notice that's not calculate, that's paste. This is not quite the same as what we were doing before. So I'm going to click enter and it's going to paste it onto my home screen for me. It hasn't run it, so in order to get it to run, I actually have to hit enter again. So hit enter again, it'll find it. So it finds this probability right here is 0 0.0625. Okay, wonderful. So let's make a little note up here. So um, also note that binome PDF, the binome distributions are in second, 
VARES on the calculator, right? So the second button and then the VARES button is how you get to them. Okay, so I did binomial PDF, but what if I don't put in a zero? Because I could do it again. I could hit second distribution, go to binomial PDF, which is letter A, and I could say 4.5, and I could put in 1, and that would give me the next number. And then I paste, press enter after the paste, and there you have it. This is really tedious. So what if I don't put in anything? So if I go to second distribution, and by the way, if you know it's letter A, you can actually hit alpha A, and it'll take you to binome PDF. So I just happen to know that's where I was. So suppose I leave the X value blank, as is suggested right here. Sorry, I just changed the screen a little bit. So don't put in an X value. See what happens. All right, so I'm not going to put in an X value, so let me paste. So it's just 4 and then 0.5, and if I press Enter, it'll actually give me all of the numbers. There's the probability of 0, there's the probability of 1.25, there's the probability of 2, 0.375, the probability of 3 is 0.25, and the probability of 4 is 0.0625. Now, if you want to be really sneaky about it, let me teach you one more thing. If I go to Stat and go to Edit, clear out my old, just real quick. Remember that our options are 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 for our number of boys. So if I go back here and I take what we just found, so second distribution, alpha A, there it was, beautiful, and I run it, I could actually store my answers. So I can click enter and I can click store it'll store my last answer, it'll store that list. And if I tell it second L2, enter, it'll repeat it and say, okay, cool. But it stored it with the store button, it saved it. So if I go to stat edit now, there it is in L2, and it looks just like the table looks. That's a really nice handy feature, especially if there's a lot of decimal places here. So this is 0 0.25, this is 0 0.375, this is 0 0.25, and this is 0 0.0625. All right, let me scroll back real quick to 6.1 for a second. Back in 6.1, when we first did expected value, you can see here that I warned you we're going to learn how to find these probabilities for section 6.2, and there they are. See the 0 0.0625, the 0 0.25, 0 0.375, and so on. Those are the numbers we just came up with with the binome PDF, the probability of zero boys, the probability of one boy, and so on. All right, let me go back to 6-2. Okay, so here we are. Here are these distributions. Okay, now what about the cumulative probability? The cumulative probability is the probability that x is less than or equal to x. Oh, it's not going to like me. Hold on one second. That's the cumulative CDF function. And I know you're thinking, well, what's the difference? Well, let me when you see it, I think you'll understand it better. So let me go to, um, let me quit first of all and get out of there. Clear all this out. So I'm going to go to second distribution, and binome CDF is right below PDF. CDF stands for gathering, adding, cumulative. So I'm going to take binome CDF, letter B. I'm going to take 4 as my N. I'm going to take 0 0.5 as my probability of success. I'm going to leave the x value blank because I can, because there's that bracket in there, which the TI company puts in there to let us know we can put it in or we cannot put it in. It's your choice. So we're not going to put it in. We're going to leave x value blank. So when I go to paste and I press enter, it gathered all of them. But again, I've got a lot of decimal places here, so that's kind of hard to look at. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the store button and then I'll take my last answer, and I'm going to store it not as L2, but I'm going to store it as L3. So second, three, and then hit enter. All right, it doesn't look any different here, but if I go to stat edit, I can actually see the difference right here. So here's 0 0.0625 right here. So, so far it seems the same. Well, that's because you're just adding up 0 0.0625 to itself. There's nothing to go for. But for the next one, if I add these two numbers, the probability of 0 or 1, they would add up to 0 0.3125. You're accumulating, you're adding up your probabilities. 
So these two numbers together make 0 0.3125. That's where it comes from. All right, now what about these three numbers? These three numbers together would add up to 0 0.6875 then these four numbers would add up to 0 0.9375. And of course, by the end, all probability distributions have to add up to 1. So the cumulative distribution has to make 1 by the end, because we have to have all possibilities accounted for. So the cumulative probabilities add up all the individual probabilities. So the PDF finds the chances of two boys, the chances of three boys. The cumulative finds the chances of three or less boys, right? The chances of two or less boys. So let me let me write that up just real quickly. So the chances of, and I just picked two of them. I just picked these ones just to look at. So the chances of exactly three boys in a family of four would be 0.25. It's binome PDF four comma 0.5 comma three. Right? So you want exactly three boys? Fine, that's binome PDF 4, 0.5003. If you want three boys or less, right? Well, three boys or less would be up to and including three. So that would be binome CDF 4, 0.3, 4, 0.5, 3. Excuse me. And that would be right here, and that's this number right here, right? 0.9375. So one's talking about exactly three, exactly two, and the other one's talking about two or less. This number here is three, or excuse me, that number here there is two or less. This pink number right here is three or less, and so on. All right, so what about the NBA free throws? We could do them with the same idea, right? So if we want to find the probability of exactly two successes, three successes, and so on, I know we did it longhand at the beginning, but according to this, we could use a really simple binome PDF to do this. So if I want the probability of exactly two successes, then I would use binome PDF, right, because I want the probability of exactly so many successes. It would be 3 as my n, because n is equal to 3 shots. Right, we're going to have three random NBA players right there. So that's why it's 3. n is equal to 3. And our probability of success is equal to 0.77, right? Because these are NBA players, so they've got a good chance of success. If I don't put in a number, it'll actually just find all of them for me. So if I leave it at 0.77 right here as my probability of success. So let me go back to... Um, well, actually, let me clear out L3. I don't need it now. So clear this out, and then I go here and clear this out. We're only talking about three free throws. <laughs> Say that five times fast. All right, so let me delete my four here. So if I quit and go to, uh, let's see, second distribution, binome PDF, that's letter A, because I'm trying to figure out the probability of exactly zero free throws, one free throw, and so on. So binome PDF, three trials, 0 0.77, go down to paste, press enter, and actually I'm going to be sneaky. I'm actually going to store it right away. So if I hit the store button, S-T-O arrow, you can see there's a little arrow up there. So I'm going to say, hey, store this in second L2 right from the start. You can do that, and that way you don't have to do this answer thing if you don't want to. And if I press enter, it'll find, and look at those terrible, terrible decimals. Great, but if I go to stat edit, I can see them, and there they are, nice and neat for me. So I can see this probability is 0 0.0122. This is 0 0.1222, 0 0.4091, and 0 0.4565. It found the same probabilities as the beginning, but a lot faster, and without a tree diagram, without the multiplication rule, it just found it all quickly for us. Very nice. So I just typed that up real quickly. So the binome PDF finds the same probabilities as our starting example, but much faster and easier, especially with that stow button, S-T-O arrow, making it easy for us to put them right in the table and be easy to read and see.